people like me. You need people like me so you can point your fingers and say, that's the bad guy. Okay, we'll start with this. This past weekend, reigning unified, now unified minimum weight champion, Sinesia Estriadia, she dominated Germany's own Tina Ruprecht, and now she vows to pursue a Yocas de Valle fight to become this division's undisputed champion. I'm whooping you next, vowed Estriadia. Valle can get it next. I'm the best in this division, and I know it. This is the part where things could get difficult because both these fighters are on different sides of the street. For those not already aware, both champions were in action this past weekend on separate cards. Yo Costa Valle was in action in her native Costa Rica, making a voluntary title defense of her two alphabet titles in the minimum weight division. And she successfully defended them. She's still a unified champion at this weight. It comes down to just her and Sinicia. The question is, what's it going to take to make the fight happen? Some time ago, Yo Costa Valle inked a promotional pact with Golden Boy Promotions, who used to promote Sinicia Estrada before she crossed over to top rank in ESPN. There were discrepancies about the money. Sinicia wanted to make more. Golden Boy Promotions would not oblige her. As a result of that, the two went their separate ways. Now she's making a top rank in ESPN what she wasn't making at Golden Boy. So will Yo Costa Valle? Is she gonna cross the street or what? Once I become undisputed, I want to move up to light flyweight and become undisputed there, claimed Estriadia, who previously held the WBO Junior Flyweight title before she vacated the remain at Strawweight, otherwise known as minimum weight and then i want to move up to another weight class and become undisputed there my goal is to become undisputed in three different divisions and i think she can do it it's possible but i don't think it's going to be easy like flyweight and flyweight she'll get a little bit more pushback at those weights than she's getting at minimum weight for now she's targeting a summer showdown with the only other champion at this weight unified champion of costa rica yo costa valle she wants to do it this summer interest in particulars in association with Yo Costa Valle's last fight is that it wasn't billed as a Golden Boy promotion show by way of DAZN. It took place down there in Costa Rica as a Marv Nation promotion, and it was shown by way of Black Pride. Is she not with Golden Boy anymore? If she isn't, that does make it a less complicated situation. I tried to make the fight with Yo Costa Valle years ago, said Estriadi Adi Adia, at the Fresno Boys and Girls Club in Fresno, California. For whatever reason, we couldn't make it happen. At the time, now Valle being with Golden Boy and me being with top rank my goal she still is with golden boy target is to go into the undisputed world title fight with yo Valle around summertime i want that fight next and i think it's gonna cost them i think it's gonna cost them a pretty penny to get yo Valle to cross over moreover if she still is with golden boy that could complicate things i don't know that she is i don't know that she is and on one hand you say that she was in action this past weekend, but it wasn't a Golden Boy promotion show. It wasn't on DAZN. But you know, she is co-promoted by way of Marv Nation. It was a Marv Nation promotion. That doesn't necessarily mean she's not with Golden Boy anymore. And if she is, she was actually with Marv Nation promotions before she signed to Golden Boy. As far as Yo Costa Valle, I'm not really concerned about her style, said Estrada. I'm going to go in there and be the best super bad I can be. The best. The best me I can be. And I am going to come out undisputed. Yo Costa Valle is a fighter that has shown improvement over time after enlisting the aid of Coach G, Gloria. It's noticeable. She's gotten better. She even went up to light flyweight, beat then unbeaten Evelyn Bermudez for her two alphabet titles. She subsequently vacated those titles and moved back down to straw weight, otherwise known as minimum weight. She's currently unified down there at minimum weight. She's one of only two champions at the weight. It's just her and Sinicia, so it's only right. They've got to do it. They've got to fight. So if Yo Costa Valle does have any remaining ties, the Golden Boy promotions out of spite, that could get in the way of the fight. And even if she's not with Golden Boy, what's it going to take to get her to go to top rank? What's it going to cost? I'm sure that top rank can formulate a career high purse for Yo Costa Valle. They can offer her more money than she's ever made. But will that be enough? What kind of asking price is she looking for? What kind of money? To take on the only credible threat 
to her title reign in the strawweight division, otherwise known as minimum weight. It's a dangerous fight. I want to say that in spite of all Yo Costavalle's improvements over time, I still favor Sinesia to beat her, to beat her handily. She already beat a better fighter than Yo Costa in Tiny Tina Ruprecht this past weekend, who already beat Yo Costa years ago. Years later, Yo Costavalle might very well be a better fighter than she was when she fought Tina, but I don't think she's so much better that she can beat Sinesia. Not that Yo Costavalle is not a good fighter. She's a good fighter, but anything Yo Costa Valle is good at in the ring. Sinisi is better. Better in every department and then some. Better in every way. Better all around. She's a better combination puncher than Yo Costa and a bigger puncher, a bigger, more concussive puncher overall. Better on the front foot, better on the back foot, better moving lateral, better on the move. Faster hands, faster feet, more athletic, more spiteful. I've had the pleasure of speaking to Sinisi on a number of occasions here on the channel and you never know what to look at her, but she's a vicious fighter. She's mean spirited. She ain't just throwing punches to throw punches. She's trying to hurt you. There's nothing Yo Costa Valle does better than Sinicia Estrada, and it's not because Yo Costa's not a good fighter. She's a good fighter, a very good fighter, but Sinicia, bad motherfucker. Super bad motherfucker. Ow. Heavily favors Sinicia to win that fight if it actually takes place. The question is, will it? Just have to wait and see. Men's Bridgeweight news ahead of his upcoming Bridgeweight title fight with Lukas Rosensky. Alan Babich feels betrayed by Eddie Hearn believes he isn't a priority to Matchroom, and he has reason to believe that. I don't feel like Matchroom tried hard enough to secure the rights for the upcoming Bobich versus Rosansky fight. And that's not a victimless crime. Alan Bobich could have used home field advantage. Figuratively speaking, of course, because Alan Bobich is a Croatian national, but if it were a Matchroom show, he'd be the house fighter, and he'd have that advantage. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna give Eddie Hearn something to think about. He's gonna see he made a mistake, said Alan Babich. Poland-based Andrew Wazilewski's knockout promotions outbid Eddie Hearn's matchroom boxing for the promotional rights to the vacant WBC Bridgeweight title fight between Alan Babich and Lukas Rosensky. Wazilewski's company offered 425000 for the contest between the Croatian fan favorite and Polish prospect, a bid of $75,000 higher than matchroom 350,000. The fight has since been confirmed for Saturday, April 22nd. It's the same day as Garcia versus Davis. In Poland, by way of Sky Sports, airing the contest in the United Kingdom. So not only did Matchroom fail to secure the rights for the fight, they failed to secure the foreign rights, the UK rights to the fight as well. The fight happening in Poland, the least they could have done was secure the UK rights for the show, and they didn't. How did they get beat out by a domestic outfit in Poland? Perhaps they weren't trying hard enough. Alan Babich, like most fans, is shocked that he will have to travel to Poland for his world title fight with leading promoter Matchroom, losing out to little-known knockout promotions and boxer Sky Sports, adding insult to the injury through their co-promotional UK broadcasting deal for the card. The Croatian revealed difficulties in working with the Polish promoters to ID boxing. Boxing is a dirty business. I'm feeling it right now. They don't even want to give us tickets for my guys from Croatia and the UK to buy them. It's convenient that Sky Sports and Boxer are involved. We know what Ben Shalom's been up to. We know what he's been doing. He's been trying to poach many of Matchroom's fighters and bring them back over to Sky Sports. And at minimum, he wanted to bring this show over to Sky Sports because lo and behold, they're the ones that are going to be showing it in the UK. So is it that Matchroom Matchroom didn't try hard enough, or is it that KO Promotions in Poland had help? Help from a bigger outfit than KO Boxing Promotions in Poland. Is it possible that Ben Shalom supplemented the effort to win the rights for this fight to ensure that he'd be able to show it on Sky Sports? In any event, Alan Babic feels raw about it. He feels betrayed by Eddie Hearn, who has promoted his whole career for not winning the bid and believes he is not a priority to Matchroom, as they also promote Anthony Joshua, Canelo Alvarez. I felt betrayed. Everyone expected that fight to be in the UK, and nobody thought that Matchroom could be outbid by Poland. He, he being Eddie Hearn, he's got bigger fish to fry. So I think I kind of fell into the third plan, not even the second. This game is a dirty game. I know that. I don't expect no one to love me. I was really hoping my fight was going to be in the UK, and I'm hurt. The 32-year-old promises to deliver another all-action fight on April 22nd and make Eddie Hearn and Matchroom regret not winning the purse bids. I'm going to give Eddie Hearn something to think about. He's going to see he made a mistake. You know what that sounds like? Sounds like if Alan Babich wins that fight, 
he might make the same trip over to Sky Sports and Boxer that Joshua Buazzi and Lawrence O'Coley just made. That's the takeaway. That's what that sounds like. I don't know what Alan Babich's contractual situation with Matchroom is. I mean, we know his old buddy who brought him into it. Dillian. Dillian White. He still seems to be dealing with Matchroom. The rumor is they're going to be getting him back out there in June. But you know, unless Alan Babich has an actual contract with Matchroom, a promotional Packed. He might leave. Listen, it's possible Look. that Matchroom isn't as invested in Alain as Alain might have thought because he's campaigning as a bridgerweight, entertaining fighter that he might be. He is a fighter of limited ability. I mean, he's fun to watch. Don't misunderstand me, but I ain't got no illusions about the guy. So it's possible that Matchroom didn't want to overspend to win the rights for his fight just as easily as it's possible that Matchroom didn't expect that KO boxing promotions in Poland would formulate a bigger offer. Two things can be true at the same time. You gotta look at the size of the bid and you gotta look at where this contest is taking place. You know, this ain't one of the glamour weights, the Bridger weight division for what is the Bridger weight title. Matchroom bid approximately $350,000 for the rights to the fight. It's not an astronomical amount of money, but are we expecting an astronomical amount of money for a Bridger weight title fight? Was it that Matchroom's bid was too low or was it that KO boxing promotions bid was surprisingly high close to half a million dollars i haven't heard eddie hearn address this to anyone can we interpret this as matchroom trimming the fat or can we interpret this as ko boxing promotions getting a bit of help from someone else in the United Kingdom. Think about it. You're Ben Shalom. You know that Alan Babich's fight with Lukas Rosansky is gonna go to a purse bid. You get in contact with the people over there in Poland. You tell them you're willing to add something to the pot if you get the UK rights to the show. So maybe you throw them a little $75,000, $100,000 on top of what they were already gonna pay and suddenly they're beating out Matchroom, a bigger outfit than they are by and large. Maybe Ben Shalom, boxer, and the people over there at KO Boxing Promotions work together in order to cut Matchroom out of the deal. Maybe. Or maybe Matchroom and DAZN aren't as committed to Alan Babich as we thought they were. Neither would surprise me, though we do see a conscious effort, a concentrated effort from Ben Shalom to bring Matchroom fighters over to Sky. Yeah, he's been busy with that. Savannah Marshall, April Hunter, Chris Billum Smith, Liam Smith, Lawrence O'Coley, Joshua Buatzi. However it breaks down, Alan Babich feels raw about it, and he's making it known. And finally, in men's super middleweight news, per a tweet from Michael Benson, WBA President Gilberto Mendoza has suggested that the WBC mandatory David Benavidez should face WBA mandatory David Morrell next, with the winner to then challenge Canelo Alvarez for the undisputed WBA, WBC, IBF, and WBO super middleweight world title! 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 title. title. I very much like the idea of this fight, and I like the idea of David Benavidez fighting more than once, just once this year the same way that he did last year, the schedule that he was on last year, it's inexcusable. A fighter that age? He's in his mid-twenties, for God's sake. He should be fighting more than once a year. Rumors abound, according to Batman Boxing, there are rumors that the fight is already signed. Samson Lukowicz confirmed that in his interviews. However, it hasn't been made official. Now, a lot of people want to see Canelo Alvarez take on David in September. They want that to be his next fight. And David is his mandatory challenge by way of the WBC. The issue is that WBC likely won't order that fight between David and Canelo until their convention later on this year in the fall. Canelo himself, he could always decide to hit the gas on that, make the guy an offer straight away to do the fight in September, but Canelo's got Bivol on the brain. Beyond the upcoming John Ryder fight in May, he wants to have a rematch with that guy. I'd prefer that he fight David. Rumors abound. Looks like David might be busy. It does make sense to get him out there in the summer months months and what perhaps would be billed as another box office fight, though it's not breaking news. According to OG624, it's already on YouTube on a Spanish interview, but haven't seen a lot of people talking about it. According to Samson Lukowicz himself, Benavidez versus Morel is already signed for David Benavidez's second fight of this year. For David, it makes sense for him to have that fight with David Morrell sooner than later because David Morrell, he's only got eight professional fights, but he's a fighter with a high ceiling and a big punch good pedigree. The more time you guys don't fight, the more time you allow him to develop, the more he will. The more dangerous he will, in effect, become. All right, now, David Benavidez has approximately three times as many fights 
as David Morrell. But if you've seen David Morrell in action, you'll know what I'm talking about. This guy's a serious contender, even if he ain't got a lot of fights. So if behind the scenes, Samson Lukowicz is working to secure David Benavidez as his next fight, isn't it a bit disingenuous to run around name dropping Canelo Alvarez when you know you're working on something else, a fight with someone else? I'd say it is. I would say it's a bit disingenuous. You're getting everybody's mouth watering over a Canelo fight when you know you're working on other things. Though oddly enough, I don't blame Team Benavidez. You heard that right. I don't blame them for this fight. working on David's next fight on the heels of his latest one because they can't wait around on Canelo Alvarez forever. And if Canelo is focused on a Bivol rematch in September, and that's what he's saying, it is. the show must go on. The same underlying principle for David Benavidez versus David Morrell should be the same underlying principle for Canelo versus Benavidez. If you're David Benavidez, you want to get David Morrell in the ring now while he's still green. That applies to Canelo. If you're Canelo Alvarez, you want to get David Benavidez in the ring while he's still green. Greener now than he will be later. The guy didn't have an answer for Caleb Plant's holding tactics. He didn't have an answer. All he could do was wait for the guy to get tired. Stylistically, Canelo Alvarez would go into a David Benavidez fight with an edge. A stylistic edge. The boxer puncher, the counter puncher versus the pressure fighter, that favors the boxer puncher. Because he doesn't have to go out there and find the guy the same way he would a pure boxer, a guy like a Dimitri Bivol. You ain't gotta go out there and find that pressure fighter in order to get off hard shots. He's going to bring the fight to you, at which point you can employ your patented counter-punching. Hit the guy with shots he don't see, and believe me, he'll give you plenty of opportunity to do that. David's best weapon is his engine, his gas tank, more than anything else. His hooks are not defensible. He doesn't show much of a jab, and his torso is quite static. It's a big target, and he don't protect it. So he hasn't paid for it yet because he doesn't fight the kind of guys that could exploit that. Canelo Alvarez just so happens to be that kind of guy. He can. Mid-range to inside, Canelo Alvarez's head movement and upper body movement, rolling and countering, slipping and hooking. I'd wager that Canelo actually can dominate the pocket. Against the bigger David Benavidez, he can. At that range, the smaller fighter is quite slippery. And at that range, the smaller fighter has the advantage because they can put combinations together faster than the guy with longer arms. Okay, like David, who throws a lot of punches mid-range to inside, but they're not defensible punches. These are Long, sweeping hooks, wide shots. They can be countered. Box of punches got a stylistic advantage over a pressure fighter. And tack on that Canelo is vastly more experienced than David Benavidez is. It behooves him to fight that guy sooner than later. And the same applies to David Benavidez and David Morrell. It behooves David Benavidez to fight David Morrell sooner than later. For the same reason. The more time you give him to develop, the more he will. It's not bad news that they're already mapping out David Benavidez's next fight. He's a young guy. He really should be fighting two and three times a year. Year. Can't keep him on the schedule he was on last year. You're never gonna turn him into a star doing that. Needs to be busier, and hopefully he will be.